Hello, my name is Zachary Carling, Editor-in-Chief of The Prospector, here today to talk with our Yuba College President, Tony Dawson. Thank you for coming in again today to give us some more information about our college and pull back the curtain on what's happening here at our own college. You bet. Thank you for having me. I'm glad to be here. All right. Well, let's get right into it. You came in to talk to us last September, mm -hmm. and since then, has anything about Yuba College changed in your opinion um, since then? Sure. So. I think that when you start a new job, you're excited and invested. Um, you're looking forward to doing the work. Um, but for me, um, as I was trying to think through this, uh, the thing that has changed the most is that it's become more personal. Um, when you're coming into a new job, you know what the work is going to be, and you've looked at the data and the buildings. Um, and now I've gotten a chance to really build a relationship with the people. Mm -hmm the students and the faculty and the staff. Now when I come to work, I'm still excited, but I'm much more personally invested. It's no longer about the students, it's about you and the relationships that we've built. Um, and it makes me want to work harder. So for me, the biggest thing that has changed about my impression and my work here is it's become very personal. This is where I live, this is who I work with, and you know the people that I see every day. Gotcha. So since your time there, you've had now we're in, our, we're in our second semester of this COVID sort of semester. Mm -hmm. And last spring, COVID took us all by surprise. And commencement was something that was rather unique compared to all other commencements beforehand. So now that we've had a year to observe the practices and plan accordingly, what do you think commencement will look like this coming May? Yeah, that's a great question. Um, one of the things that's still not clear is what phase we'll be in and what the guidance will be. Um, and because it is so unclear, um, what we know we need to do is make sure that graduation is a very well-planned opportunity to recognize what is a monumental accomplishment for all of the graduates. Um, and so instead of leaving things up in the air, what we're going to do is the graduation will largely be virtual or online um, with some pretty significant improvements. Last year's graduation was a big surprise. COVID came in March and graduation came in May. Uh, and so it was a, a scramble to make sure that graduation still happened in a meaningful way. Uh, this year, we'll, in, we'll continue some of the things that went well about that virtual graduation, but try and add some additional uh, ideas to make it personal, special, and meaningful. There's going to be uh, some sort of in-person uh, event that will occur around graduation. Probably not a large gathering, but maybe something more like a drive-through event uh, where we will uh, manage safety, make sure that everybody's spread out and that there's not a lot of contact and we're wearing facial coverings and uh, keeping everybody safe, uh, but still giving everybody a chance to come here and mark the occasion. We've got some ideas about some potential uh, commemorative boxes and maybe some murals and uh, photo opportunities and uh, still hoping to incorporate some of that cheering and and you know having a day where you really mark the occasion uh, but but doing it in a way uh, that we don't gather a lot of people because we we do expect we won't be fully open and operating so we won't we won't be able to have a traditional ceremony from that perspective gotcha so that that drive-through component that you mentioned or that that in-person possibility would that happen on the same day as, commen as commencement, May 28th, or a different day? You know, likely on the same day, but it's not set in stone just yet. Um, we really want to bring together all the right voices and perspectives. Um, you know, we know that this is an important opportunity for students, so there's a commencement committee that's coming together to identify what's possible, uh, to set up a day and set up a time so it happens where the most number of people can participate. Gotcha. Okay. So before you'd mentioned that we don't know what phase we'll be in when the time comes. Um, so still being in the first half of this semester, do you think the second half of this semester will have any classes or lab classes come back to being in person? Well, what I know right now is that our case trends look great. Uh, we certainly have lowered the number of cases that we're seeing every week. Um, we're seeing the positivity rates get and stay low. And those are good things. Uh, we have to continue to do our part to get and keep those case rates low. So we're still wearing our facial coverings and we'll continue to. We're still social distancing, washing hands, uh, you know, making sure we're not coming in when we have symptoms. 
as we transition from purple to red phase, um, our state guidance does allow us to bring some of our hard to convert courses back face to face. Some examples of that are some of our chemistry labs, for example, will come back with some face-to-face -face lab elements where students will get to come in um, and participate in a class here. Um, and so as we see those, our transition to those phases, uh, we will move with those phases to bring things back face-to-face -face as much as possible. Um, I do expect that we will, in the interest of ensuring that students are learning, that we'll try and be as aggressive as we can while making sure that we're also as safe as we can. So if we see instances where we've got case rates on campus increasing, we'll have to make decisions about making sure we follow all the appropriate protocols. What I do know for sure is I've been thrilled to see that some of our athletics activity has been able to open up. Uh, we've seen some changes in guidance. We've been able to utilize some of the federal stimulus, stimulus funding to be able to do some testing on campus. And that's meant that not only were we able to start doing some conditioning outside, uh, but we also were able to opt in for our phase two sports. So our baseball, softball, and track and field teams will get to see some version of competition this spring. Um, it'll come at the cost of doing some COVID testing, having some really clear safety protocols, but I'm thrilled for our student athletes. And I think that is one example of really some of the positive signs to come as we move forward. One last thing that I'll mention is we are told that our state guidance as it relates to all of the safety protocols that are expected for us is being updated. And so when that guidance comes out, it's our intention to take a look at that, see what's possible in the new guidance and do everything that we can to keep students learning and our faculty teaching and keep things moving forward. Well, it's great to hear that we have that, that optimism for our immediate future. Yeah, absolutely. And so breaking away from the immediate future, a little bit more long term for summer and our fall classes, do you think summer and fall classes will operate in similar ways? Is it going to be just as we get there, we'll know? How do you see that playing out? Yeah. With the vaccine becoming more available, with our case rates going down and with guidance fluctuating, um, we expect to be a little bit more aggressive for summer and fall uh, because the scenario will be safer for us to do so. Um, and so if we see a transition uh, from red and on to uh, hopefully to orange, which is one of the most open opportunities, we'll continue to move in that direction. But we are currently planning for both summer and fall to look a little bit more face-to-face. -face. Probably closer to a 50-50 uh, sort of mix, um, but we'll be making decisions about where is the best place for students to learn, where they need to learn hands-on. So some of those places like our pottery classes that are pretty difficult to do from a distance will start to come back more quickly as soon as we can. Um, some of our classes where we've demonstrated the ability to do well in a distance education modality will continue to be online until we can see that we can keep case rates stable and keep everybody safe. Uh, but I think you will see that the summer and fall will be a little more aggressively open uh, than we were last summer and fall. Gotcha. Okay. So when we return, hopefully more so in the summer and fall, um, I understand that there will be some changes that will be seen on campus. I know last time you were here you mentioned some things were in the works for renovating or changing the look of, of this campus. So yeah. has there been any updates on that? Absolutely. So uh, pending board approval, uh, which should happen in the month of March, uh, we will transition from the design phase to the construction phase or uh, the painting phase, if you will, of one really big project on campus. And that's our weatherization and painting project. So that we, the college has done a lot of work to try and uh, refurbish the roofs on many of our buildings. Now we need to move to the walls, to the sides of the building. Um, and so you'll see a lot of work to replace some of the exposed aggregate that's on the side of some of our buildings where we're having some troubles with that, Placing, uh, replacing a lot of the places where there's you know, rust and the caulking needs to be replaced. But the, the most visible part of that project is that the campus buildings will get painted. Um, as you know, Zach, currently most of our buildings are kind of a beige color. Uh, the palette that was selected by a committee of uh, faculty, staff, students, um, and an architect and interior designer that helped us through the, pro through the process um, is based off of our Yuba College colors. 
And so the buildings will look a little more blue and gold with some grays and blacks and whites uh, in there, but it'll look a lot more vibrant. Um, and we expect for that project to be done by the early fall, probably in the August or September timeframe, weather permitting and as you know, construction projects can mm -hmm. shift in different directions, uh, but it's gonna change the way that the outside of the campus looks. That uh, doesn't stop there. Uh, we also will be removing some of the portable buildings near the 1200 building, which is kind of where our athletics are. We have a couple of portables back there that have been closed and aren't being used for a period of time. So mm -hmm. those will go away. Um, and also moving into the fall, we'll start to see buildings 1300 and 1500, which are called our dorms, mm -hmm. our old dorms, will come down as well. Um, and so those things together will change a lot about what the campus looks like. Uh, but I'm not done. <laughs> we also have a project with uh, Salove and our Rotary partners to come in and do some campus beautification work on some of our beds, uh, garden beds uh, near like the entrance flower beds that'll get transitioned. Uh, they're bringing in things like the Yuba Blue Rock um, and some eco-friendly designs that will both make those areas of campus uh, look uh, more pleasing, more beautiful, um, but also in a way that it lowers the amount of resources necessary to keep them looking great. Uh, one of the big challenges with any landscaping, you know, can frequently be the amount of water and, you know, human resources that it takes to manage and maintain them. Um, and their plans are really about balancing not only what naturally exists here, mm -hmm. but also about doing it in a way where it doesn't require a lot of that water and human resource. We expect, too, that our Building 800 remodel project in this next academic year, so the 21-22 academic year, will start some of the construction phase. So you'll see some of that change as well. Um, and then we'll spend the 21-22 year starting to conceptualize what I think is our next priority after we fix some of the outside of the buildings, is to focus on some of the things inside with specific attention to some of our classrooms. It's really important to me that we identify those spaces that need some uh, work uh, because it's important to me that we are making sure that those spaces where students are learning and teachers are teaching the best possible spaces that we can. So we'll outline a plan to make a difference in some of our classrooms through the next academic year and hopefully start making a difference through construction in the year after that. It's very exciting to hear. I look forward to seeing that happen. Yeah, it should be exciting. I'm, I'm looking forward to things looking a little bit more like the um, people who work here and learn here. Mm -hmm. um, and I think that some of those projects that I talked about will make a big difference there. Awesome. Yeah. So to wrap around back to where I first asked you, with the differences now in having started and now having had some time under your belt here at Yuba College, um, since you've been here for a semester or so now, has anything changed with regards to the areas of improvements you think are needed most at Yuba? Or rather, what areas do you think Yuba needs to improve in most in the short term and in the long term? Sure. So a lot of what I've talked about um, is really important. Changing the environment, and uh, we've done some work uh, this year, and we'll continue to do that work on uh, building culture, um, making connections. Um, you've probably heard being YC proud. Uh, we'll continue to refine that. We'll continue to work on that to you know, create a sustainable culture uh, for our students and for our employees. Um, but I expect that in the 21-22 year, we'll start to work together to really co-create um, and use a, a student success vision. And what I mean by that is um, working together as a college to say how are students experiencing uh, the services that we provide, um, how are they accessing education, how are they succeeding while they're here, you know, how frequently are they completing, and what are the labor market outcomes that they get when they leave. Um, and taking a look at that data and saying, what is it that we need to focus on, um, and creating a shared student success, vision for student success. Um, we also are going to do some work on uh, creating a system, a systematic way that we gather student voice. So that means that we have clear ways that we understand how students are experiencing coming to the college, um, a, a way to gather how students are experiencing some of their programs while they're here, 
not just in the classroom, but the services that are provided, the library and the tutoring and financial aid, um, and how are they experiencing services when it's time for them to complete, to transfer, uh, to get employed, and really using that student voice to make improvements and decisions, um, and then reporting back to the students to say, you know, we gathered your, your voice in these instances, you know, it identified that we need to pay attention, we had, you know, did some discussion about what that might be, um, and we implemented something new, and this is what it looks like. Uh, but, you know, creating that sort of continual improvement, but really, you know, based on a systematic gathering of student voice. Gotcha. Well, thank you. Yeah. So do you have anything else that you would like the students of Yuba College to know? You know, the, the biggest thing for me is uh, it's been a rough year. Uh, there's no doubt. Maybe that's putting it lightly. <laughs> um, but I, I was optimistic in uh, September. You know, I'm just as optimistic, if not more, now. Uh, because I know that, that our students have invested in themselves um, and building a foundation that when this pandemic is over is just going to make things you know, even better. Uh, with all of the improvements in the vaccine and the case rates and you know, our ability to start competing in athletics um, and seeing things starting to open up, uh, now's the time to really double down our efforts uh, in moving forward, making sure that we are you know, continuing to uh, finish our classes and graduate uh, because it's all going to pay off in the end. Um, and I have just been inspired by the stories that I've heard of students who have had to make it all work. Um, and I, you know, feel strongly like, you know, things are getting better and, you know, their reward is in front of us. Mm -hmm. And uh, I can't wait to see it. So, yeah. Well, thank you so much for your time yeah. and coming in here today. Appreciate it. Thank you for having me. And hopefully we'll get you back in here in the future as well. Absolutely. All right. Well, until next time, farewell. <laughs>